Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Space Tyrant. This is, that's us, this is us, we're the Tyrant. Uh, this is a 4X style game, like a super light 4X. And if you're not familiar with 4X as a term, it means games like Civilization. Uh, the X's stand for uh, ex explore, exploit, exterminate, and something else, I don't know. Uh, but this is a sort of like a very light distillation of all of the ideas behind a game like that down to like the simplest point they could be while still being those mechanics. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, in the interest of disclosure, this is a review copy provided by the developer, uh, which is uh, Blue Wizard, Blue Wizard Digital, you can see down here in the corner. Uh, although, there's a typo in the name of their company. Uh, listen, it's in early access. It's actually not even in early access yet. This game comes out on, enters early access on June 19th. So that is next Wednesday uh, for $20. Let's so uh, let's do it. Let's let's show let's show some of what's going on here. I believe Blue Wizard Digital was founded by the guy who founded PopCap. Uh, if you're familiar, PopCap, the game studio that came out with uh, Bejeweled and a lot of other games that stole an awful lot of time from me and my friends when we were uh, in high school. Uh, and this game, you know, it feels like a PopCap game in some ways. In that, like, po I felt like PopCap games always had this visual style that was very enticing it was always like you'd see, you'd see a game you'd see somebody playing it and you'd be like oh man what is that i want to i want a piece of that I, I think this game does that really well and it has it has this sort of faux we get to be the comic super villain thing that i always have loved i'm, I'm a total sucker for that uh, so this is the idea we are playing it we are in the middle of a game right now just about at the midway point of a game uh, you are a supervillain. You're playing against the Galactic Senate, which is trying to uh, prevent you from taking over the galaxy. Obviously, we want to take over the galaxy. I'm never sure what these supervillain types are going to do with the galaxy once they've taken it, but that's not the important part. Uh, so, you are fighting the Senate for control of these three areas, the Twisting Nebula, the Hive Worlds, and the Burrowed Fields, home to the three races of the game. The I don't know what their names are. But the Burrowed Fields is like Rabbit Dudes, and that's, we're playing as Rabbit Dudes. And over here in the Hive Worlds, you have uh, Insects. This is, uh, I believe the name of this this group of people is the Buzzerk Empire. Get it? Like, you get it. Uh, they have like these little honeycomb worlds and stuff. I think this is really cool, aesthetically. And then the Twisting Nebula is home to the Techno Slug Party. And at first I thought they meant like a political party, like the Bull Moose Party. But what they mean is a Techno Slug Party. Like, it's a bunch of dudes in visors with glow sticks just, like, raving. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's an aesthetic that I've not seen in a, uh, in a sci-fi or fantasy game before, so I guess that's cool. Uh, so we have these little missions. Every, every turn, sort of, we do a mission, and then the Galactic Senate gains control of an area. You can see they have one pip of control here. And if they completely control any area, then it is impossible for us to continue. We lose the game. So it's important that not happen. Uh, we have uh, a variety of missions available with a variety of different goals and artifact rewards and stuff. Uh, we're going to be undertaking this mission because this mission has a rare empire reward. And I'll explain a little bit more about what this actually means after we complete it, uh, provided that we do complete it. So our goal is either to control enough planets or to perform enough research. And the quirks of this sector are the labs here are slow and the cities here are poor. So it's going to be hard for us to pick up resources. All right, so we go into here with a uh, with a commander, and this this thing that we're unlocking is the third commander for this faction. So there are some persistent unlock elements between the games. If we unlock this commander, he will be unlocked permanently in all of our future games. That's a a big value, I think. Uh, so each commander has a couple of tyrant cards. You can see these guys have different cards. Uh, these are cards that that you earn in a in a mission by performing certain deeds. So, like if we un if we capture two asteroids, we'll get this thing that boosts our empire income significantly. Uh, and then each one is they have a deck of cards. We'll talk about the cards in a little bit, but the the decks are different from uh, faction to faction. And also, you get to equip three artifacts. So we picked up a new crown. Of course, we're uh, we're a space tyrant, so we have a cloak and a scepter and a helmet. Plus five starting tyranny is a pretty small bonus. This, on capturing a planet, reduces enemy neighbors by one defense. Okay, you guys don't know what that means yet, but trust me, that's I'm pretty excited about that. We also have a, an HP bonus for our medium-sized ships, 
and we start battles with one power. All right, let's go. Those are those are all good bonuses. Those are pretty okay. Uh, so as you progress throughout each game, uh, trying to battle the Senate and and take control of the galaxy, you unlock artifacts and stuff, and that stuff is per game. You're always going to start with the same set of artifacts, and you'll unlock new artifacts for that game. But like I said, there are persistent unlock elements as well. Like unlocking this commander will unlock him for all of our future games. So we have to either conquer 22 planets or research 12 technologies. All right, so it's a little bit like a 4X here. You can see there are uh, there are regions, there are things in those regions, uh, systems and planets to take over. And we have gold and science and stuff. But really, the game is very light. The developers describe it in the... Uh, in the press copy that I saw as a chicken nugget sized experience and I think that's like a that's a pretty good explanation of what's going on here so we have a number of fleets right now that number is one and each turn our fleets get to do uh, one move and then one action so let's just go ahead and move over to this world I'm gonna try to take this uh, this world over so we go over here and we invade it it has some strength we have this six-sided invasion die okay we beat the world's strength world is now ours and the value of this thing is that it gives us an extra invasion die let's see it's a barracks world so now we have two invasion dice and it'll be that much easier for us to conquer future worlds uh, this is a world that gives science it gives science based on the number of interlink nodes you own so we'll want to search the galaxy and find a couple more of those uh, this world gives us crystals crystals are the resource that are used to play with these cards we get to draw a card every turn, and then there are other circumstances as well that give cards. Uh, we may as well play... We have two crystals right here, and our crystals regenerate every turn, so we should use them. Uh, and then this is a primordial world. It gives money, uh, but it gives very little money. Primordial worlds are just kind of bad. Uh, and then there are city worlds, kind of like the one we started on, that give considerably more money per turn. So let's go ahead and play Tightened Grip. Get a little bit of extra income per turn. And we'll play Landing Party. We explored the planet very quickly when we took it over and nothing was found. Let's uh, let's check again. Hey, look at this. Scouts in this system have located a damaged probe of unknown origin. Scans show that the device contains an ancient sentient AI system. What do we do with it? We could just throw it back into space because it's garbage, or we could force it to do some research. Or there's a third option but we don't have the trait necessary to see it. These are a little bit like um, the blue text traits in FTL, if you're familiar with that. Uh, you gain traits by doing these exploration actions, and then those traits can unlock options in future explorations. So, I don't know, let's force it to research. Let's see if we can get something useful out of this AI system. The AI is enraged at its treatment and immediately begins hacking all research computers. You quickly destroy it. We lose 12 science, but joke's on him, we haven't generated any science yet. Uh, and then I think that's our, that's our turn. That's all we can do. So over here we have our tyranny meter. You just saw it decrease a little bit. Oh, that is a huge fleet. So we have uh, tyranny and unrest. Every turn our tyranny value is reduced by our unrest value. And if tyranny hits zero, you lose the, uh, you lose the mission. So that's pretty bad. We gotta be careful to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, you saw this world suddenly became under Senate control. The worlds around us become terrified of our of our actions, and will uh, will tend to beg the Senate for defense. I'm just making sure our fleet's in good condition here, so I think we're going to start some stuff. So they'll reach out to the Senate for defense, and then Senate fleets show up, and it gets really bad. Uh, it's much easier to wipe out the neutrals that are uh, around the map before they get taken over for the, by the Senate. So you're in sort of a race against the Senate to take over all these worlds and then fortify them. Uh, so at the beginning of battle, we get to choose a tactic. Uh, let's take... I, none, none of these are very good. We'll take uh, overcharge, and then we'll go into slow motion mode. So we don't directly control our ships. You see, we just they fire at us, we fire at them. Uh, but each one of our ships has a special one-time use power. For these little ships, it's volley. It's just take a free shot, regardless of your normal firing cooldown. So we'll just launch all of our volleys right away, see if we can't uh, light up the enemy fleet a little bit. And our hero ship has a power that is not one-time use, but is considerably more expensive. Uh, our, our cruiser here has the power to regenerate. Uh, obviously, that's not going to do a whole lot for us right now until he's actually injured. Let's hit Meteor Strike here. 
Okay, that's a considerable amount of damage. And then, unfortunately, uh, your ships, once they once you've used their one-time power, they're pretty much just on autopilot, and you just kind of have to wait. Uh, every once in a while, a ship will become inspired during battle and will earn a new use of its power. Like that, right there. Get meteor strike again. Wow, this is a very costly victory. We lost a lot of money worth of ships. Uh, so the combat system is pretty simple. You don't make a huge number of decisions during a battle, but the order with which you use your, your the order in which you use your abilities actually can make a pretty huge difference, especially once uh, fleets get larger and more complicated and start having more ship types in them. So you've discovered some androids. A well-remembered energy signature comes up from the planet, and you land to find the androids who earlier escaped you. Oh, this is an event that uh, happened in an earlier mission. There were some androids, and I tried to destroy them, and they ran away. They stand before you impassively. So we can threaten them again. It didn't work out that well last time. Or we can bribe them 50 money to stay put. I'm not going to do this. We need our money right now. Let's just threaten them again. Not wanting to flee again, the androids finally relent and take your threats seriously. Your scientists gain great knowledge from their ways. Oh, we got a free tech. So our little blue destroyer ships uh, now have plus 90 health. What? What, is, what does plus 90 mean? Uh, actually, okay, it's it's the line marked armor, I believe. So they had, they had about 500 health. Now they have more. Eh, that's not bad. All right. Unfortunately, I think we are gonna have to rebuild this fleet. I want to save up our money because your homeworld gives you the ability to hire one extra fleet each mission, uh, but it costs 300 money. I don't think we can really wait though. Hold on. What what cards do we have? We have this card that can add a carrier to a fleet for no money, just some crystals. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll drop a carrier in here. And then I suppose we'll buy one destroyer. Um, as you saw in battle, the ships that are in the front row will take damage first, because the projectiles actually have to get past them to hit the back rows. So the frigates deal more damage than the destroyers do, but the destroyers have considerably more health. So it's a pretty common, uh, straightforward tank and DPS kind of idea here. Alright, I'm worried that these guys might just fly over here and attack us, but Senate fleets often don't want to leave worlds undefended. So yeah, okay, we're, we're fine for now. Oh, well, let's pop landing party. Let's do another exploration event. Oh, bad roll. Well, that's not ideal. If we jump over here, we'll automatically conquer this world because it has no, uh, it has the pacifist trait, which means it has no defenses. So we may as well just go and take a thing for free. It'll give us a little bit more science. Local police have caught a, sh a life form which appears to be able to change shape at will. What will you do with it? You can put it in a zoo or enroll it in our secret police. This sounds like a really good idea to me. The new spy is a smashing success. It reports to you on friend and foe alike without being detected. All right, so these cards that, we're, that, that we have in our hand represent our schemes. Uh, so that's why him being able to report on people gives us more cards. Unfortunately, our extra exploration event yielded nothing. This is uh, not, work, not working out that well. All right, so we can see that this enemy fleet here has, uh, first of all, because they have the same commander we do, with the Meteor Hurling ability. Uh, they also have a lot of ships. Uh, they have more ships than we can have. But if we fill up our XP bar, our hero levels up for the rest of the mission. And that gives us uh, not only an improved version of their power, but also a larger uh, fleet design. So we can cram some more ships in. I think for now we just uh, we have to go get some more XP. Sorry, I'm trying to select my fleet. Let's just move over here. We really, really just need more XP. So these ships, I can't remember if these kinds of ships get shields or not. Okay, let's take reinforcements. So after we lose our first ship or two, we can pull in a couple of bonus ships. And we'll hit our volleys real fast, just extra damage. Right, the carrier ability is incredibly expensive, but it puts a very high damage, uh, damage over time effect on an enemy ship. I don't, it's not as great 
against these small ships as like say just volleying which is a lot cheaper and honestly ends up doing a comparable amount of damage but yeah you can see these the rabbit space marines are now on that ship and hopefully will kill i was hoping they would do a little bit more damage than that okay he survived just barely yeah the thing about carriers is that they are pretty fragile uh, but still fairly expensive to build. It's a bad combination of traits. Alright, so let's invade. You can see this is the die that we have from our barracks world. So we didn't really roll all that well, but it doesn't matter. We had two dice. Among the flicker crystals of this erratic world, you find a hermit. Uh, yeah, not all the text is in a super great place. Again, the game is not actually even in early access yet. So you got some time to clean this stuff up. Gesturing spastically with a hand covered in crystal piercings, he invites you into his cave. Do we enter the cave, shoot him in the face, or ignore him? I'm kind of curious. Let's let's see what he's got. Immediately on entering, the hermit launches into a profound lecture on galactic management and economics. Your mind is open to new possibilities. Okay. That worked out well for us. And we now have uh, considerably more crystals, as we conquered two crystal worlds. And this one, in fact, is an erratic world, which gives extra crystals. So... Increase a fleet leader's XP by one, draw a bunch of cards. Uh, we have a maximum hand size. We're going to have to go down to three cards before the end of the turn. So I'm trying to figure out what, what I want to play. I don't want to play the Brainstorm, so we want to hold on to Brainstorm. What is our fleet leader's XP right now? Okay, so one XP leaves him two battles from leveling up. And we have a couple of enemy fleets nearby. Oh, we also have a space monster. Uh, I We cannot fight this. This thing will destroy us. And unfortunately, it's probably going to. We could add three defense to a controlled planet. Uh, keep in mind, this world is a pacifist world. So even if we add three defense, it'll be six defense times zero. So this is, this is also pacifist. Man. I guess we could drop defense on our home world? It would not be great for us if the uh, Senate took that over. And then, geez, I don't know. I guess we'll do this just because I don't really have a lot of use for these other cards. And then we have to discard one. Orbital Strike lets us nuke the defense of planets that we're currently sieging, the planets that we're in orbit around. It's a fine card. Um, I think I'm going to drop a Brainstorm. The issue rarely is the number of cards, although actually we have a lot more crystals now. I'm going to drop Field Promotion. It's very expensive for what it does. I don't think it's really that great of an effect. So yeah, you can see our Tyranny being reduced by our current Unrest value. Uh, man, we have, to, we have to get our fleet large enough to deal with those guys. But we just passed the 300 threshold, so let's go ahead and hit the higher button. Grab our second fleet. And now we're out of money. <laughs> so we're going to have to take it easy for a little while. Uh, I don't actually know what to do. Our fleet probably is not large enough to fight these guys. Ah, oh, we did hit a uh, tech breakthrough point. So we can upgrade these ships with 15 extra damage. Or have these ships gain 50 health when their health gets low, so... Effectively, they just have 50 more health, except that it doesn't kick in against attacks that kill them from high health in a single blow. Um, let's take extra damage. I do like extra damage a lot. We might fall back and try to get ready to challenge those guys. I don't want to be over here by this space monster, because if he flew over to us, that would be really bad. We do not have what it takes to fight one of those. All right, and this fleet, I'm going to move over to here. So, Senate-controlled worlds uh, embark on projects that improve the world in some way or make my life more difficult in some way. And occasionally, our worlds will uh, be affected. So, like, this world has a rebellion brewing. If we bring a fleet over to it, we can just crush the rebellion. If we didn't crush the rebellion, eventually it would liberate the planet from our control. Which is a huge bummer. Uh, and then we're, again, uh, having a hand size problem. 
I don't really want to play reserve tank. I don't think there's much point in making one of my fleets move twice. Because neither one of them is 100% in fighting shape. Hmm. I guess we'll drop the orbital strike. I know I'm not being very efficient with my crystals. I'm not actually spending them, but uh, stuff's rough right now. These higher difficulty missions, it turns out, are pretty difficult. Yeah, so all the worlds around are becoming... Ah, it's a good thing I moved. All the worlds around are becoming allied with the Senate, which is not great for us. Cap ship missile. Destroys one capital ship. Okay, uh, unfortunately the ships that they have uh, in these fleets are not capital ships. Why don't we have this fleet gain a frigate? And then we can go after these guys. Uh, the, thi the thing that helps your tyranny more than anything else is conquering new worlds. So we really need to drive our tyranny value up. If you get it high enough, uh, you unlock this death ray ability. So the emergency bulkheads or our frigates go kamikaze when their health gets low. I'm not sure how good this is. Let's let's take that more because I want to see what a fully upgraded frigate looks like than because I like that skill specifically. You know? All right, let's go start some trouble. Uh, okay, I'm gonna take Fighter Squad. Fighter Squad is a good tech. So, uh, all right, we're gonna let our energy fill up, and then we're gonna play Fighter Squad, which will launch a bunch of fighters based on our current energy level. And hopefully our ships just won't die in the meantime. I think this is pushing it. Let's go now. So, our ships have taken some hull breaches. You can pay a little bit of power to seal up a hull breach. A hull breach is effectively just... It's just a damage over time effect. It's annoying. So you can see all these fighters that we launched are doing quite a bit of damage over time to our enemies. Oh, he tried to go kamikaze, but he just got shot out of the air. I didn't realize that was an option. So yeah, we're in a we're in an asteroid field. There's asteroids coming down constantly. Um, if I had one complaint about the game, it would be that there really is a lot of randomness in the combat. The targeting of your ships is uncontrollable, the targeting of the enemy ships is uncontrollable, and that kind of stuff often will determine an outcome. And then you end up like in these asteroid fields or like in a nebula where ships are randomly getting struck by lightning and stunned. And it's a little frustrating the way that sometimes a battle will uh, end unfavorably due to factors that were out of your control. But uh, you know, it's, it's part of the trade-off of making combat really light and simple. I think, is you either make it deterministic in a way that's super easy to completely control, or you add some randomness. Alright, so let's invade this interlink node. It will be worth uh, an amount of science based on the number of interlink nodes we control. So right now it would be four. It will eventually be pretty valuable. Okay, we'll finish taking that over next turn. Hmm. A derelict cannon. Cannons bl cannon planets blow up ships from light years away. Unfortunately, this one is a derelict. This world over here is a gold mine, but it's already been looted, so it gives a little bit less money. We do need more money. It would be really nice if we could buy more ships. So, like, this shipyard... Man, all we can actually afford is, like, we can afford a destroyer or two frigates. What is the, the sh thing we're going up against has... Six small ships and two mediums. Jeez. This is bad. This is a bad situation, man. Uh, I think I'm going to brainstorm. Let's, let's see some options here. Alright, let's play Orbital Strike. We'll reduce the defense of this planet by two, which means we'll immediately conquer it. A small population of truly bizarre multi-limbed life forms. Unfortunately for them, their sole habitat appears to be atop a vein of isotope-rich ore. So we could refine the ore for fuel, which will probably let our ship or let our fleet move one more time or something. Or we could capture one of the creatures, or we could hunt them for sport. Let's capture one. I'm just curious what they are. Their many legs make them very difficult to catch, but you manage to snare one eventually. It seems capable of understanding basic commands, and you have no trouble domesticating it. Okay, so we gained a trait. And the, the pet trait doesn't do anything by itself, but future exploration events may rely on it to do something cool. Alright, well, that was fine. Not a total bust. 
Um, so we picked up Fusion Mine, reduce enemy fleet HP by a small amount. Uh, enemy fleets, just like our fleets, heal at the end of the turn. So this is only something you want to do when you're about to get into a fight. You Fusion Mine a fleet and then attack them immediately. So I think we want to save landing party. Cap ship missile could be valuable, but we don't see any enemy capital ships right now. And honestly, 10% health loss is not a big deal. I'm going to discard this as well. Okay, you know, the mission's not going super well. You can see this world is getting very, very strong. Um, the presence of all these space monsters complicates issues tremendously. Ooh, a battleship. Yeah, 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 let's play that. So the battleship is a type of ship that I actually can't build. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about why that is later, but uh, it needs to be able to get them from cards. So let's go ahead and place a couple of destroyers. Just like give these big expensive ships a little bit more cover. All right, at this point, I think we might be able to take these guys. Uh, we should, I guess let's play Landing Party. The planet has a gigantic species, uh, or a species of gigantic proto-sentience native to it. How will we manage them? Have them, tol have them toil the fields. It's not, like, super good English. Or become their god emperor, or study them. Well, I like being people's god emperor. But if they're huge, uh, I could see how them resisting that might be a problem. Why don't we just study them? Unfortunately, studies fail to produce any applicable results. Ah, but we gained the trait scientist. Okay, that could be useful. So do I want to go after these guys? They have two mediums and six smalls. I have three smalls, two mediums, and a large. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm tired of, tired of living in fear. And even if we don't successfully kill them... Uh, if we damage their fleet, it'll be hard for them to repair, and then, you know, we'll, we'll just attack them again. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do reinforcements. We'll summon two temporary frigates right away. Just cover us up. Let's start using our abilities. Meteor Strike is fantastic. And then, I'm gonna actually let Boarding Party charge up, and drop a Boarding Party on one of their larger ships. These damage over time effects are a little bit more meaningful against things that, uh, are harder to kill. We also have, yeah, the very powerful pulse beam attack. And then we'll just throw out some spare volleys. That ship, while it was destroyed, he, uh, also has access to some meteors, it looks like. On the whole, this has gone very, very well for us. Oof, that sucks. That is an expensive ship to lose right at the end of the battle. Unfortunately, it's not really a lot for us to do while we wait for things to recharge. Alright. Ah, and we've unveiled a prison planet. Uh, the prisons are ideal for recruiting commanders, so if we free this man, the Shoctopus, he will become a fleet commander for us. I'm down with that. Okay, not a great roll. Unfortunately, I believe we can't move to this node until we clear this one. Ah, but our tyranny is built up enough that we can use the death ray. So use a little bit of our tyranny to destroy some ships in an enemy fleet. I think we should definitely soften these guys up. Ah, that was a really good roll. Okay, and you are completely surrounded by space monsters. So maybe this is not a good place for you to be anymore. Yeah, these... This is really crummy, though these monsters being in these positions. I'm going to bail out, because the monsters do move around, and I don't particularly want to lose that commander. Um, if your commanders get killed in combat, they're only out for a couple of turns before they return, but... I would prefer not to have that happen. Yep, and indeed, that world did get moved off to. So I guess I'm going to head these guys over to here. Picked up Orbital Strike... And another tech. So we can upgrade our carriers. They can launch one additional fighter, have one more fighter out at a time. I think we're just going to lean into this stuff. These, these guys are relatively cheap. We use them a lot. 
Uh, we will not probably end up having all that many carriers. All right, let's invade this world again. Come on, six. Three. Wow. Okay. That sucks. If we had rolled a four or better, we could use Orbital Strike to finish the... Uh, to finish the world off. As it is... As it is, that's a real bummer. Uh, let's play our Brainstorm. Okay, we can play Strike Patrol. Just add some frigates to this fleet real quick because we are going to need them. You know, let's put them in front of that heavy ship. Uh, add the fast ability to a lab you control. Fast just increases the output. So that's not a bad card. It's just more science every turn. I do think Fusion Mine is pretty not great. Alright, our Tyranny meter is starting to get pretty low. We gotta conquer more worlds, man. Okay. If we let them finish that Deploy Militia project, they'll make another fleet. So it's pretty important that we get over there and stop that. Alright, we've picked up Plus Tyranny. Might actually be really useful. Invasion will expend our turn. Oh, now we roll a six. The fleet has surrounded a rebel who escaped in a research ship. He threatens to detonate the prototype drive if you do not allow him to escape. So we can call his bluff an attack. We could run for it so he doesn't destroy us all. But I picked up the psionic trait uh, earlier in uh, in another mission. So let's try to uh, let's try to use it to board the ship. A blast of psionic power distracts the pilot at a key moment, and your space marines capture the ship. So we just got an extra cruiser. That's pretty great, actually. Uh, let's do this. And then we're going to use the reserve tank card. Give them their move back. See if we can't go save our buddy the Shocktopus. Ooh, a stun. I'm gonna I'm gonna stun their cruiser right away. I think that's probably worth it. Meteor strike. And then I think what's pulse beam? Yeah, pulse beam. <laughs> pulse beam is a better option than boarding. Oh, and the volley skill on these guys has been upgraded to tactical volley, which is uh, the ship the destroyer fires, and then any a destroyer next to it has a chance to fire as well. Uh, I guess that just happens when you upgrade them. We didn't take an upgrade that did it, but... Alright, so we have uh, orchestrated a prison break, and hey, free fleet. Alright, so now we have three fleets to work with. Oh hey, this is the event that gave me the psionic trait earlier. Drawn to a remote location by unexplainable forces, you encounter a frog-like creature. You sense that it has become tired of this world and wishes to relocate. So if we spend 50 money to furnish some quarters, uh, we gain the psionic trait. I've done this already, and I need my money for other things. So we can pay five tyranny and refuse to take the creature. I don't think we should do that. We need our tyranny. Let's just vaporize it. You raise your weapon, but suddenly black out. Hours later, you awake on your ship, confused and unable to recall how you got there. Yeah, okay, fair enough. And we lost a card, and I don't remember what the card was. It was probably good. So that's a shame. Uh, but we've got a new fleet. And that is not a shame. Uh, worlds that are under our control will not suddenly become Senate worlds either. So it's important for us to like clean out these sort of like back corners of our empire. All right, we're in a little bit of a rough position here. We are certainly accumulating technology quickly, though. So, auto fire, increased volley size is harder for enemies to evade, or the regeneration power of the cruiser extends to all adjacent ships. This is so, so powerful. I think we have to take that. So, you guys move one. You guys move one. Oh, uh, we probably... I mean, we have to get over here, right? The, the galaxy map is not huge. We probably have to get over here. But this... The way this... Uh, the, the node graph has worked out here is really unfortunate. I guess we'll just head this way. That, uh... 
monster is doing a really good job of gatekeeping. Right, let's do something like this. We have just enough money to complete that fleet that way. Uh, and then start in on these guys. This might not go that well. They have a, uh, a capital ship here. Yeah, that thing is pretty scary. Uh, so Static Field is not actually useful here because these ships don't have shields. These are ships of the same types that ours are, and our ships are all armor. So I guess we'll take reinforcements. When two of our people have died, we can replace them with frigates. Let's just volley the heck out of them. The only option we really have here is just to damage and get through it. Okay, so we're in the nebula. You can see that they are uh, the nebula is occasionally shocking our ships and stunning them. Activate our regen shield. It turns out not to matter. More frigates. Yeah, this is this is pretty bad. We're not even going to get a single kill, are we? Uh, shielded. This commander uh, is not as good as our. Uh, not as good as our other one, unfortunately. We might be, if we could take this thing down. I really wish that these ships would get re-inspired. Well, we may as well geo shield. I don't think it's gonna matter. Come on, inspire. We're so close. We're actually not that close. Yeah. All right. I was hoping that we would get one of their ships down before that happened. Uh, let's pop Arena Deathmatch, or no, let's let's do Scientific Equipment. Let's increase our research rate, so you can see we gained three science per turn there. We are at 51 Tyranny. We will run out of Tyranny in just a couple of turns here, actually. We have, uh, we have got to get this done. So our commando was injured in combat. He'll be back. Uh, we don't have to do anything special. He'll just reappear in a couple of turns. resources. Unfortunately, there's a couple of cards in our deck that allow us to destroy ships at a range without actually having to engage. Um, I don't know why we're not drawing any of them. I'd really like to. So it's it's fight a space monster, which I know we haven't seen, but trust me, the space monsters are far more difficult than these guys are. I guess we just wait? Like, this fleet can definitely take them. Let's just, like, buy some more ships for this fleet and keep waiting. Now, we could oppress this world, permanently increasing its science output with a small chance of a rebellion. I think that's worth doing. Okay. Two extra science per turn, and we don't have to, uh... We don't even have to put down a rebellion. Lucky us. Let's play survey team. Our advisors have determined this planet is a good candidate for improvements and experimental effects. Always hack the planet. All right, so the planet has now gained a power. We can pay 39 money to gain 13 points of research. It's an interesting number, 13. I wonder if it's just however much you need for your next breakthrough. Okay, so if we don't gain some we don't gain some stuff on this coming turn, we're going to be uh, real sad. We have Arena Deathmatch to play from our hand, which gives five tyranny. Okay, that guy's revived. What do we add here? There is supposed to be a tooltip telling you exactly how much tyranny you have. We've seen it already, but apparently it's just gone now. Okay, well... We'd better go take this over. Alright, so... Ah, make a ship invulnerable for 15 seconds. That sounds like a good start. So the first thing we're gonna do is... Pulse Beam? Wow, okay, he has a lot of health. So we're gonna save our respite for, uh... Hitting one of our larger ships. Your strike. Okay, we got one of them. Just make this guy invincible. I'm sure he's gonna try to finish the job, yeah. 
Okay, we got there. That actually wasn't even that expensive. We only lost small ships. Okay, so we gained some tyranny there, or we put down some unrest or something. Uh, additional asteroids increase durability. This is not a great upgrade, but I know that the upgrades that come afterward are pretty great. So let's keep playing into that. Let's take our two dice. Um, the extra die that we got from the barracks is not a normal d6. It's it's uh, faces our one one two two three three. So the average expected value of this combination of dice is like between five and six. Okay, five damage is fine because we have that card in our hand that will finish the job. We've determined this is a good candidate for improvements and effects. Cool. What power did we get here? We can destroy this world to gain three crystals. I'm pretty sure mana means crystal. So what's our story now? We are at 33. Okay, well, we'll survive the turn. Let's send these ships over to here. Um, there's two reasons. Number one, this way we can maybe spread out and grab both of these worlds next turn, get even more tyranny. And number two, if the space slug comes after us and we get to fight it with both fleets, maybe we can actually kill it. I'm going to play this as well. Gain a little bit of tyranny. But this is a pretty bad start. This is maybe the worst start I've, uh, I've ever had in a mission. Of course, the one I choose to record is going to end up being one where I die, right? Right, so you can see the, the Senate's taking stuff over behind the scenes. This is very difficult for us. Alright, Space Monster did not come to get us. We picked up Fusion Mine, which is a bad card. And what is hacking? Reduces my science income. Okay, I don't love that. That can stop happening. Uh, we probably should pick up some more guys. Our gold income is very poor. Uh, much worse than usual at this point in the game. We just haven't seen enough worlds that generate money. Alright, so we're going to run these guys this way. This should be pretty easy. Ooh. Next up, energy meter. Okay, so I'm going to play pulse beam, then pop our energy meter up to full, and then just really, like, unleash. Fire! Everybody fire! Okay, good kamikaze rush there. All right, so even though we uh, even though we went super hard on the offense there, we still managed to lose two ships before we finished them. All right, Stonehair's ability has been upgraded again, and we have an even larger fleet. I think that provides enough tyranny to keep us, yeah, keep us above bankrupt next turn. We should be able to win this fight as well. I'll go ahead and use my fusion mine. I don't think that that fusion mine uh, is necessary, but you know, if we have some bad luck, we might be glad we did it. Ooh, laser strike. This is a lucky tactic to pull. So we're gonna grab laser strike and we're gonna just do this. Ooh, two dead ships. Oh, these guys are in the wrong order. Okay, let's use Regeneration Shield, try to save some lives here. Yeah, the uh, the AI set up the fleet in the wrong order, I didn't realize, because these guys should be in front, right? Uh, it looks like we're only going to lose one ship, probably. Cruisers do pretty good damage. Alright, hopefully we can roll a four. Just barely. But that's really good. That puts us in a much better position, tyranny-wise. And then we may as well play landing party. Let's... Wow, nothing, nothing discovered twice. I'm gonna move here. If, if the sea monsters, or if the space monsters move away from their worlds, I want to be able to uh, fall in after them. We're doing pretty well on the research tax objective. We are not very close to controlling 60% of the planets. Are we good next turn? It looks like we are probably not. Uh, fortunately... Uh-oh. Well, we can just play this battle and fast forward, because there's no way on Earth that we get anywhere close to taking these guys, this guy out. 
hit our regeneration shield field. Uh Geo Shield this guy so he takes this damage from stuff. Like look at how little damage we're doing. Yeah. Uh sea monsters are killable, or space monsters are killable, but you really need like a large fleet to do it. Oh good, rebels. That's annoying. Okay. An allied fleet gets to move twice is actually a pretty good bonus. So I'm gonna go take this world over while the sea monster or the space monster is away. This counts toward one of our objectives. And the space monster won't like free it from our control or anything. Alright, you guys get all of the money that we have available to us. So let's put a guy here. Hmm. Trying to figure out what is the best defensive formation. If we put this here, he can heal. Yeah. Regeneration field affecting adjacent units uh, probably will be pretty important. Alright, so we can stun an enemy ship for 20 seconds, and that is what we will do. You are stunned. Please do not participate in the battle. Right, I tried to regen shield to save that guy, but he uh, doesn't care and went to rush to his demise anyway. Okay, we're getting there. This pulse beam is definitely the next thing we want to do. Right, that guy is so close. He's so close. With him down, we are, we are basically guaranteed the victory now. Let's hit regeneration field. They help close up the hull breach in time. Boarding party is the only ability we have left, but it's not going to be charged up yet. So we got there. Again, it was, it was a little expensive. We lost a lot of small ships there, but we absolutely had to do it. We desperately need to invade more worlds. All right, we're getting there. So we can pick up another world. Uh, let's hit the reserve tank and just move to this undefended place that only has two defense. Take that over. And because this is an asteroid, it's gonna trigger our, uh, it's gonna help toward the production of this card. So we were uh, furious at being thrown in the pain booth for a trivial offense. That's true, I throw people in the pain booth all the time. A local noble brings legal charges against you. How will you react? We could rig the jury if we had any money. We could deny all charges. Or we have the hitman trait. I hired a hitman in a previous uh, mission. Yeah, let's just assassinate the judge. No one brings a tyrant to heal. Let the galaxy be damned. Your hitman takes out the judge, leaving the courtroom... Wow, okay, yeah, this text could use a little touch-up. Uh, but we lost a point of unrest, so that's pretty good. That was a pretty good outcome. And we got some extra tyranny for taking over another system. And we work toward this tyrant card. If we go grab that, we'll uh, we'll be able to increase our income by 30% for the rest of the mission, which is pretty important, actually. All right, we're about to hit another tech upgrade. We're also about to lose another uh, another We'll just fast forward this. I mean, I'll press all the buttons, but we're definitely doomed. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. And in fact, this is actually kind of a good thing. And the reason that it's actually kind of a good thing is that that activates one of our cards. This card was activated by losing two fleets to space monsters. It is a one-cost card that lets us instantly kill a space monster of our choice. So, let's take a tech upgrade. Plus 10 evasion, that's fine. Let's just move over here and crush this rebellion. And then we're going to lethal force this space monster. 
And that was the one that was from here, so now we'll be able to scoot through here and actually get some stuff done over in that part of the universe. Uh, I think I want to go grab the Asteroid World for this other card. But let's, let's pick up some more defenses first. The more guns we bring to the battle, in theory, the fewer of our guys we will lose. Okay, these units do get shields. So let's go ahead and take this and just damage their shields immediately. And then we're gonna volley, and volley, and volley, and volley. There are random uh, meteors flying around everywhere, but let's just add some of our own. And then we'll crack the regeneration field, give this guy a little bit of assistance. I don't know why everybody's so focused on him. You gotta keep resealing the hull after all the breaches from the asteroids. Okay, we managed to get through that without losing anybody. It's very, uh, very cash efficient. Okay, this will give us some tyranny, which is good, and also... Asteroid money. Okay, there's an extra 50 money per turn. It's pretty good. We have enough, we have enough tyranny uh, that we will not lose the game if we go this next turn without conquering anything, which I believe is guaranteed to be the case if we will not conquer anything. Uh, this planet is going to fall to rebels, and there's not really a lot I can do about it. Shocktopus has returned. Sending both of these guys out this way. So I don't really want to send him here. To attack the rebels. I want to send him here and have him move into those uh, into those guys over there. Because we're going to keep need to keep gaining new stuff. Uh, so let's take Tightened Grip, which will increase our income for a couple of turns. And I guess that's it. Uh, I'm not going to play Fast Refit, even though we have the crystals to do it, because I don't want to drop a cruiser in this fleet and then have them get obliterated by the space slug. Man, that thing has 10 defense now. I don't think we can actually uh, take that down. So. Okay. That world went neutral again. I wonder. Does that world having gone neutral mean that I'll get tyranny for reconquering it? Let's find out. We can hope. Take, make a ship invincible. Take advantage of this tactical volley while we have it. And actually, we are totally killing it over here. This is much better than I thought it was going to go. Oh, I didn't. I was going to make one of our ships invincible. I didn't even realize. I was looking at our health bars so much. I wasn't really paying attention to theirs. All right, so let's invade. Okay, we did not get tyranny. We got tyranny for winning the space battle. So you could pick up, recover 100 health and seal all breaches when health gets low, or psychic link between ship and target heals friendly crew when the enemy suffers. 10% of damage inflicted converted to health. That's actually pretty cool. But we have access to Protection Field. This is one of the most powerful abilities uh, that I've encountered so far. Uh, when you use Regeneration Field, not only does it heal nearby ships, but it also gives them a bonus shield on top of it. Uh, so I think we're going to take that. That is pretty spectacular. Okay, you guys. At this point, I'm going to add the Cruiser. Do it like that. All right, here's hoping we can roll a four on two dice. We can indeed. All right, with this uh, space monster down, we have access to so much more of the map. Inside an abandoned factory, you find operational droids mindlessly fussing away at a spotless interior. What do we do? We can ship the droids off to be reverse engineered because we have two levels of scientists. We can pay ten money to weld lasers to their head and fire them into the uh, wire them into the defense net. 
Or we can just smash them and use them for parts. I'm gonna blue text. Come on. It's... Attempting to reverse engineer them triggers a fail safe from the attack. Well, that didn't work out very much. Uh, okay, they have some pretty big ships. We have Eviscerate or Summon Two Frigates. Let's uh, let's just eviscerate their big ship right away. Tactical volley. He reaches all. Uh oh, he's stunned. He can't use his ability. Well, it wore off before we got to the, uh, enough energy to use it as well. As you can see, a considerable amount of shielding on these three ships is very powerful. We'll drop Geo Shield over here. Just give him a little bit of extra defense. As soon as this stun wears off, there we go. A bit of extra healing. He got immediately inspired. I do believe we're going to do this without any uh, any casualties on my side at all. Bramble Shield went up a little bit late. The missiles were already past it. Okay, good. A level. I like that. And we may as well play this card. We have a crystal left over. Okay, well, we're getting there on our tyranny. Let's keep following with these guys. We'll, uh, we'll have them split off in different directions so we can conquer more worlds per turn. And we may as well buff up our fleet a little bit. Let's do like this, because we actually have a lot of money now. Nah, they're fine. They don't need it. I'll just bank money for the moment. Oh, actually... This is probably a pretty good way to use our money, because we have to get to 12 tax, and we're actually pretty close, it looks like. Yeah, that's got to be what? We are at 10. So actually, if we can just channel money into this, it won't take that many more turns for us to win. So that's that's maybe got to be the source of the, the focus of our money for a while. We need two more tax, so... Man, Space Slug, you suck. This is the reason we didn't buy any ships for Shock to push that. Get him. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Not enough protection field. Space monsters deal a lot of damage. Okay, so I hate the fact that we're constantly losing fleets. And we drew a card that is total garbage. Alright, let's pay 154 to hurry this tech. Plus 50% damage on cruisers. Alright, so now our cruisers are all the way upgraded and they are magnificent. And you guys should just pick a world that it looks like we can conquer. This one might do. Ooh, max out energy meter. So I'm just going to play a protection field, max out the meter, and then volley my volley my heart uh, right out. Might as well set up the other protection field. So we get to spend the first uh, several seconds of the battle being invincible while firing tons of extra damage. He's so got a laser. That's a pretty good captain ability. Or a commander ability, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, you can see what I'm talking about, where, like, targeting and lucky inspires really, um, really inform the outcome of combat a little bit. Oh, that sucks. Well, I think we're gonna be okay. You can only play the hurry ability once per turn. But we have enough money to just buy our next tech. And we have enough unrest, or we have enough tyranny that we will just barely not lose here. Man, if we had not rolled that hurry ability on that lab, um, I think we would be pretty doomed. Every planet in the galaxy is now allied with the Senate or been conquered by you. The vote to mobilize the massive Senate war armada passes uncontested. All right. Yeah, so once you get into this, uh, once you get into this mode, it becomes very difficult to survive the Senate onslaught. Fortunately, we're not going to have to. I was pretty sure we were going to lose that. 
for a while. Let's buy out our last points of research. Extra 50% damage on these ships as well. Oof. Alright, so we won one mission. We unlocked a permanent upgrade for our for our team. That's pretty cool. We earned the title The Inept. Hey, I won, didn't I? S something. Seems perfectly apt to me. Alright, and what happens here is... We get our thing, then the Senate forces advance. And we get a new perk. 25 gold after each combat victory or commanders start the game at level 2. I actually really like this. That said, the most dangerous part of the game is at the beginning, and this would really help us, like, sort of engine up into having that second fleet earlier. I think we're gonna take pillaging protocols. So yeah, we have all of these perks that we've unlocked by winning missions. We've won, we've won five missions so far this game. So bonus health on one by two ships, extra damage, tech upgrade for our cruisers. That's why our cruisers are doing so much damage at the beginning there. Uh, and... Now we are in a little bit of a position, though. So the Senate has these ships to distribute. You saw we distributed a couple of them there after we did our mission. If they ever take total control of a sector, we lose the game. Uh, so we're going to have to do a mission in this sector next to drive back their control. Uh, once we finish eight missions successfully, this bar around the Galactic Senate is depleted, and we can go over there and kick their asses personally and take over the galaxy. Uh, and that's kind of like the loop of the game. You you start a game, you do a bunch of missions. Uh, it gets very, very hard. And um, I'm pretty sure the, the balance is such that it seems to me like it might be very close to impossible to succeed your first game. But you play your first game and you unlock some additional commanders. Um, I've seen uh, the designs for ships that we can't build yet uh, as mission rewards. And we're always uh, also unlocking new cards for our deck. You probably saw... Let's uh, click on something here. What do I want to do? Plus 10 research when you capture a planet is pretty cool. That's a cool artifact. Um, you probably saw we have 8 of 21 cards unlocked. Uh, so you do earn more cards for your deck, better cards for your deck as well. So there's some, there's some cool persistent advancement things going on here. Um, if you beat the game with this faction, you unlock uh, the, the Berserk faction. So I think there's there's quite a bit of replay value. It's I don't know if I want to say that it's satisfying exactly, but it's definitely compelling. Like there's a thing here. I sat down to play the game. It's it it's a little shallow, right? Because they were trying to make a game that's more accessible and a game that you can play in really small chunks, right? Like you could just do a mission and then stop and go to dinner and I don't know what people do when they don't play video games all day. Go out, have a life. But, uh, and then come back and, you know, pick up another mission. Uh, so they had to simplify things a little bit to make that the case. And so the word I want to use is shallow. But I want it to be understood that I don't mean that as negatively as it sounds, because the game is a little shallower than the stuff I usually play. But when I sat down to play this the first session just to, like, see if I wanted to make a video on it, um, I ended up accidentally playing it for, like, four hours. It was not my intent. I just... I just wanted to keep going. It's 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 simple, but something about it is very compelling. I'm really enjoying my time with it. So that is Space Tyrant. Uh, it comes out on June nineteenth. That is next Wednesday. It's gonna. It doesn't come out. It enters early access on June nineteenth. That is next Wednesday. Wednesday. It's twenty bucks, um, and I hope that some of you guys are excited about it now. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, if you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, or possibly even more, go ahead and, you know, uh, drop a like or a comment uh, in the whatever down there below the video. That helps me a great deal. And, of course, uh, stick around. Come back next time for some more exciting, weird space game stuff. I've been playing a lot of space games lately. And we'll see you then.